Welcome to my presentation with the title Data Preprocessing Method for Industry 4.0 Applications. My name is Korula Zwick. I'm a postdoc researcher at the Department of Computer Integrated Design at TU Darmstadt in Germany. And I uh, did this work together with Professor Andal, who is the head of the Department of Computer Integrated Design. Let's start with the overview and motivation for this paper. And first of all, the digitalization offers new opportunities. There are, for example, more possibilities to monitor processes, to optimize processes, for example, to save energy or to save uh, costs in a process out of digital data, which can be, for example, analyzed in the next step. But the question is, how can the potential, which you all know about digitalization, how can this potential be exploited? Well, the key to the success lies in a solid databases. So if you have a solid databases, your analysis uh, will be done well, they will uh, be done um, worthy. But if the databases has errors, for example, if there are some failures, then your, uh, well, your method cannot give you any, uh, any reliable information. So the key is the solid databases. And this was our starting point here to, um, to develop a method. And uh, this method can be used to create a solid databases depending on the planned application, so on your industry 4.0 application. Yeah. And this is the data preprocessing method for industry 4.0 applications, which I'm going to explain to you in the next slides. Because of the limited time in this presentation, I will skip the state of the art but uh, just to mention it short, there are approaches to data preprocessing right now. Uh, one example is, for example, the CRISP DM, so the cross industry standard process for data mining. And uh, well, this is uh, well known, I think maybe you already heard of it. But um, the problem is, it was developed. It was the developed on another purpose. So the existing methods are limited by the fact that the process of data preprocessing is not exclusive to industry 4.0 applications and the individual steps of the methods have been developed in a very general way and they are developed for expert users. So there is a huge gap, a research gap, and this method is going to fill this research gap. So I want to start with the method overview, and the method is shown with its 13 steps, and each step there is giving an example. So the method starts with the first step, standardization of character encoding. So this means, for example, that uh, we uh, use the Unicode to, uh, well, standardize our characters. The second step is the comprehensibility of the variable. So this means, um, for example, if you have the time, um, this is not a good information if you uh, do not give the time zone as well, for example. So the third step is the pre-selection of the data. Um, well, in the, you can, to handle a big data, um, you can, for example, exclude uh, machine data which are not going to be analyzed. The fourth step is the joining the variable in a file. So, for example, you can merge different CSV files into one file, so you don't have to handle different files. And, uh, well, this can minimize the errors occurring. The next step is the uniform base unit or time intervals. So, for example, 
the use of hourly data instead of um, minutely data if it's needed. So you can merge the data. Step six is unified data structure. Um, so here is a, a example the use of logical hierarchies in naming, for example, so that the naming is uh, well can explain itself, for example. Step seven is the allocation of related data. So here we have the use of time of in identifier to link individual data. So if you have two different data points, you can relate them with the help of the timestamp, for example. Yeah. Step eight is determination of faulty points or outliners. So here we can use, for example, clustering methods or classification methods to identify failure points. This is uh, really important to have a good uh, data um, basis. Step nine is editing missing data. So, for example, you can complete the missing data through average average values if this is helpful to your uh, to your application. The step ten is data balancing. So. Um, an example is balancing the data by adding or removing data. If you have, for example, uh, two conditions and um, one condition have a lot of, has a lot of data and the other not so much data, you can either add some data or you can uh, remove data on the condition which has a lot of data more. Next step is the scaling. So for this can be done, for example, to uh, um, conversion the data values to a range of um, zero to one, for example, if you need scaled data. And step uh, 12 is encoding categorical data. So for example, from text data to numbers. So you have uh, text data, like the name of a city, and then the city um, has a number. And the last step is the data reduction, and there can be a reduction of variables to be considered, for example. And after doing all these 13 steps, um, we have the prepared data for Industry 4.0 application. But there are some factors influencing the method, and uh, these factors have an influence on which steps should be done in the method and how these steps should be done. There are three factors uh, identified and the first is the influence of the use case, uh, the second is the influence of the initial situation and the third is influence of the experienced knowledge of the employee who is doing the data preprocession. So the first uh, is shown with Three different use cases. I'm going back to this later. The second is the initial situation and this uh, well has an effect on the pre-selection of the data and uh, joining the variable in a file, um, the uniform base unit time intervals, the unify data structure, the allocation of related data and at least the data reduction. This is uh, really depending on the initial situation if these steps are needed or if they are not needed. The um, third uh, influence factor is the experience knowledge of, of the employee and uh, here you can see some steps highlighted as well and this is the first step standardization of character encoding comprehensibility of the variable and uh, this these two steps you can have here a rapid increase in efficiency if you have an employee who is doing it uh, several times and using the method several times and doing the data pre um, 
uh, the data pre-processing step. Well then, there's the pre-selection of data, which is really um, depending on the experience knowledge of the employee, the unified data structure, um, determination of faulty points and outliners, editing missing data and data balancing. So this is really uh, depending on the individual employee which is doing the data pre-processing and uh, the encoding of categorical data and the data reduction. So after this, I'm going to introduce now the use cases to you. And um, on the one hand, we have Aribron. So this is a project for um, um, agile, resource efficient uh, production networks. And here we see this production network um, containing out of uh, different production steps, which are commonly used in industry. And we have here the data acquisition for optimization of resource consumption and production path planning. This is use case one and two. And use case three uh, is the energy production forecast. Uh, we are using a neutral network to forecast the energy production depending on the weather forecasts and historical data. Let's start with uh, use case one. And uh, this is a really easy use case. It is the monitoring of energy consumption. And uh, in this use case, the exceeding and falling below the target range of the power consumption of the machine is to be, is to be monitored. And with the help of this information, an initial assessment of the machine's functionality can be made and the valid sawing process can be ensured. And we uh, need for this the standardization of character encoding, the joining the variable in the file, and we need the determination of faulty points and outliners. But these three steps are the only ones we need for this use case one. And use case two, we want to have the key figure calculation. And here we have some more steps, you can see this. So this is like uh, nearly all the steps because we have here the climate change indicator for the machine output. And this is select selected for the key figure and it is calculated using the consumed power, the duration of the process step and the um, CO2 um, um, carbon dioxide equivalent equivalence. And in order to obtain valid calculation results, um, significantly more method steps are required, as you can see. And the most important use case is use case three. And here we have the uh, predicting the available electrical work for the next seven days in the future, depending on the forecasted weather con um, additions and you can now see we nearly need all the per, all the steps in the method and we um, need all these steps and we have the result you can see here so this is like um, a short validation with the help of this use case and we can see here now um, the predicted predicted results um, and the measured data in these plots on the left side, you can see uh, the plotted model with the raw data. On the right side, you can see the plotted model results with the pre-processed data. And uh, you can see that, um, well, the error in the measured value on average is, uh, well, is lower for the pre-processed data as uh, shown in the short table at the bottom. Uh, it is 40% for raw data and 28% of pre-processed data. And we can see um, we have different iterations during training, 6,000 iterations to 650. And we need a lot of lot more time for training with the raw data compared with the pre-processed data. So the data pre-processing helps to speed up the training. So this uh, short example shows how the method can help us, but there are a lot of more steps to do and uh, doing a bigger validation. Thank you.